Okay, welcome back. In the last episode, we looked at the various preprocessors for HTML. Now, we'll look at the CSS side with popular solutions like SAS, LESS, and STYLUS. Finally, we'll add auto prefixer using post CSS to remove a cross browser headache. We're gonna start right where we left off in the HTML templating episode, but if you need to catch up, git clone this GitHub repository, cd into Webpack course, check out CSS prep, and finally npm install to get the latest packages. All right, so over the past decade, we've seen valiant attempts to move CSS further towards a Turing complete programming language and simplify design for developers. Let's approach all three of these, SAS, LESS, and STYLUS, at the same time, since they're done the same way. We'll start, as usual, in the terminal. Let's npm install node SAS and the SAS loader. Now let's open them in our code editor. Now let's create a new file with touch source main SAS. Now in our main.js file, let's change main CSS to main SAS. In our webpack config, we're gonna add a new loader. It's gonna be very similar to the CSS loader, so let's copy that. Underneath, let's test for SAS. Let's give this a little more room. And underneath the CSS loader, we're going to add the SAS loader. Let's take main CSS, paste it into main SAS, and clean it up a bit. SAS doesn't require any brackets or semicolons. It uses white space like tabs to denote where the rules are underneath the selector. So that looks good. Now let's run our dev server to see what it looks like. If we look in our head, we see that the CSS has been exported from the SAS file. If we change it, we see that we have our same hot reloading action that we've always had. But the true power of SAS is in how it nests rules. So if we take our image in H1 that are inside of our profile anyway, and we space it so that it's underneath the profile, we're gonna have something very different pop out right here. So let's save it and see what happens. You can see that under profile, we have closing brackets around profile. But SAS has output the CSS in such a way that we can see that profile image is underneath profile. Using this nesting, we can have different styles for our images underneath profile as outside, and it's all automatically maintained. Not too bad. But what about imports? The idea with imports is that you wanna break up your CSS into various files. So let's create a new file, sourceprofile.sas. Now let's take our profile code and cut it, paste it into profile SAS. So inside main SAS, let's import profile. We can see it shows up just as before. If we edit this back, we have our same hot reloading. If we change this, it's all included automatically using the node SAS library. So this is a great way to organize your files using SAS. Now less and stylus are set up the exact same way. Let's install those now. Let's npm install less and the less loader and stylus and the stylus loader. Now inside our webpack config, let's take this SAS loader and copy it twice. Let's change the first copy of SAS to STYL and change the SAS loader to 
stylus loader. The second copy will do less. Let's create a couple of extra files. Touch, source, main less, and source, main style. So stylus is basically the same syntax as SAS, whereas less is very much the same syntax as CSS or SCSS. Let's do less first. So in main less, let's copy our CSS into it. Now we want to grab the image in the H1, and we want to paste it into profile. SAS and less allow for variables to represent our commonly used values. In less, the variables are denoted like this. So if we set up gray to equal this, and we'll rerun our web server, we can see it's bringing it in right now. Now we can change the variable, and it'll change automatically. Imports, mix-ins, and functions work just as you would expect, because all the functionality is handled on the less side using the less loader. So let's switch to stylus. Webpack reloads, and stylus has broken our code. So if we take this, paste it into here. You can see that it goes back to normal. Stylus and SAS are very similar in syntax. The difference with stylus is it also supports CSS syntax. So if we take this out, we go back to our main CSS, and we paste this in. You can see that stylus really doesn't care whether we use the SAS syntax using white space or the CSS syntax using brackets and semicolons. In fact, it doesn't care if you use semicolons at all. Everything works, no problem. The mix and match between syntaxes and stylus really is cool, and you're still able to use variables like you'd like. All right, not too bad. Now let's move on and talk about auto prefixing with post CSS. A great goal of an optimal developer experience is to abstract the browser's compatibility away into a part of the CSS build process. You can see here in profile, I have two ways to say align items. I have the standard way that Firefox and Chrome knows, and I have the Microsoft specific way that IE and Edge know. Now keeping up with all the browser irregularities, prefixes, is not very fun. And to think about that while you develop is harder than it needs to be. So the smart people at Post CSS came up with a way to auto-prefix the rules where each browser has their own way of implementing. So let's look at how that would work. Let's close down a bunch of this. Inside our Webpack config, we're going to go to the stylus loader. Right between the CSS loader and the stylus loader, we're going to add a new loader which is going to be the post CSS loader. So you want it to be in between because you want stylus to output CSS for this guy. Post CSS is going to stand in between and add the appropriate prefixes automatically. We need to add the post CSS loader, as you can tell. So let's exit out. We're going to npm install post CSS and post CSS loader. Cool. Now we're going to create a new config file. Post CSS dot config dot JS. This post CSS file is going to be pretty simple. So let's hook it up right now. And say module exports equals plugins and then an array. Inside that array, we're going to require auto prefixer. All right, that's all there is to it. So back in our stylus, let's take out MS align items center. Now we're only going to have one align items. If we restart our server, in our browser, which has already reloaded, we can see that auto prefixer adds all the different kinds of flexbox. All we have to do is add the rule, and the auto prefixer does the rest. Let's see the difference. 
In our stylus loader, we can comment this out and save. When we reload the browser, we see that everything is as written. When we add post CSS back in, we're going to need to reload the browser, but we see that we've added all the different kinds of prefixers for WebKit, Microsoft, etc. Pretty cool. Now you might be wondering, how does Auto Prefixer know what to add in? Does it just add everything? And the answer is basically the same answer that we have for Babel. It uses a specific API behind the scenes that can be found here at caniuse.com. Caniuse figures out where the browsers are right now in time and tells Auto Prefixer if we want to have support all the current browsers, we need to add these rules. So supporting all the current browsers in all their various states can now be an afterthought using Auto Prefixer and Post CSS. Post CSS has a lot more features. We're just going to use this one feature for right now. And of course, the same would work if I was using the less SAS or CSS version of this file. All right, so in this episode, we looked at a few options for extending CSS into a more Turing complete language. We also enhanced our developer experience with auto prefixing for older browser compatibility. We'll get into CSS more in future episodes, from optimizing and inlining in production to the new generations of JavaScript-based CSS solutions. See you there.